So if we could take a quick step back, I think somebody have a property that they want to identify for the 1031 exchange, but how do they start the process of being inside the 1031 exchange? Now, you as the agent for someone who's selling a property who wants to do an exchange, you should put in the contract with the buyer the disclosure to the buyer that the seller is doing an exchange. So there should be something mentioned in the contract about that. Then once you are in contract, we work with the title company to get the information that we need to prepare those agreements that the client does need to sign prior to escrow closing so that at the close of escrow, the escrow officer on the closing statement actually shows that we as the, are the intermediary in their transaction and that the funds are being sent to us at the close of escrow and not being sent to the seller. And does it have to be public knowledge? On MLS, for example? It does not necessarily be, need to be in the MLS, though often you will see it. The main thing is, for us, it does need to be a disclosure in the contract with the buyer that the buyer knows that the seller is doing an exchange because our role as intermediaries is technically to, to step into their contract. That brings up a great, a great question, too, is is the seller the only one who's paying anything for the 1031 exchange? The buyer does not have to pay anything. That is correct. There's a, there's a, a small nominal charge that the seller pays for doing the exchange, but nobody else, including the buyer, has a, a, any additional expenses. Which makes sense. <laughs> they're, they're the ones getting the benefits. So it makes perfect sense, but I, I'm sure it's a question that comes up. Oh yeah, of course. The seller is the one who is wanting to do that. And so they we even collect the fee from the money we receive. So the seller doesn't even need to cut us a check separately. Ron, this sounds like such an exciting option for, for clients. Are you like, are you surprised it's not more heavily used? There are reasons people do exchanges, not just to defer taxes, but to get into a property that's better for them than what they own today. And better obviously is very subjective, but a lot of people don't know that this option is out there. And so anything that we could do to educate them that they have this magical part of the tax code that allows them to sell something and reinvest the money and not pay taxes is wonderful. Is there any movement toward changing this or a knock on wood? Government's not touching this. There's really no movement afoot right now for any significant changes to the 1031 code. It's been pretty much the way it is for at least the last 40 years. And so there really hasn't been anything being done in Congress at this point that will change anything. What is the most interesting 1031 exchange that you've done? Without disclosing parties, of course, but do you have a, any good stories? I did one last year where a farm was being sold and it was there were seven different owners and indirectly all seven of them contacted me from separate sources and we end up doing exchanges for every single person on that transaction those those are kind of fun then there's the ones who use the um, Michelle you probably would see this in, in your line of where um, professionals like doctors or dentists or engineers um, you know they bought the building when they started their practice or into their practice. Now they're retiring and they found out that the majority of their retirement income is actually not from the money they saved, but from the money they made in the re in their real estate. If I have a client who has the real estate already in a different state, should they go through you in California or, or how does that work if they're going from a different state to a different state? A lot of clients, um, realtors uh, and brokers on the East Coast who like working with us. And so, you know, the reality is everything that we do is done wires and email and stuff like that. So I could be literally anywhere in the world and, and be able to handle people's exchanges. So it doesn't really matter where the intermediary is. I find it very interesting because the way that you just, you described the uh, people coming to retirement and using a 1031 exchange that way in, in the land, they didn't realize they, they had a lot of value inside of it because they've been working with it for so long. I've never thought of a 1031 exchange actually taking fruition like that. So a financial advisor can help their clients take, take advantage of 1031 exchanges as well. Yeah, I love talking to financial planners and estate attorneys just because, you know, a lot of clients have assets that they would like to change, they would like to roll over, they would like to buy something different and, you know, and don't realize how flexible with enough planning a 1031 exchange can be. So you just brought up a primary residence. If somebody has an ADU, for example, and they use that as investment, 
and they sell their primary residence, which includes the ADU. So the first thing to note, a property can be both a primary residence and an investment at the same time. So your example of an ADU, you know, make it even simple, a duplex. I live on one side, rent out the other. So you have that ADU or you rent out the basement. I mean, you, Sam, as a realtor might have a home office. And the key is this, what are you declaring on your tax return? If you are declaring a percentage of your property as your home office or um, as an ADU for rental purposes, whatever percentage you are declaring to the IRS as that business or investment portion of the property, you can do an exchange on that portion of the property. Do you find a lot of CPAs who uh, are comfortable with assisting your clients on this or is it a more specialized area for, for uh, CPAs. You know, I will say that a lot of tax professionals don't appreciate some of the finer points about 1031 exchanges, and I do my best to try to educate them whenever I can. Um, but you know, th there are certain things that the IRS has given us some pretty black and white answers on how to do it. And so your example, Sam's example here of an ADU or home office, um, you know, this is actually something the IRS 20 years ago gave us a roadmap on how to do with them. So there is something most accountants should be aware of, but I will say also that not everybody is aware of. Um, so we try to educate them whenever we can. That's amazing. You are an absolute wealth of knowledge, Ron. <laughs> When it comes to the I've, I've, I've got a lot of questions asked over the years. I got to get answers. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, right? And then, and nice thing is also, you know, we're the nation's largest intermediary. We are, we are a national company. We have offices across the country, and most importantly, we have a lot of uh, attorneys on on staff. So when something does get co uh, get complicated, I mean, how big is the company, Ron? Just to have an idea. We are owned by the same company that owns some of the local title companies. So. We are a small part of a, of a much, much, much larger you know, Fortune 500 company. And we are two to three times bigger than any other company in the country doing this. But we still probably only have maybe 150 employees nationwide. I'm always impressed. Whenever I send an email to you or request information from you, it's it, whether it's for a client or, or just knowledge, either you or somebody in your office, office always get back to me if you're on vacation or if you're out of the office. I get a response quickly. You just have, you have the business set up in a, in a very fantastic way. I hear that a lot. I mean, a lot of people say, I work with you because you reply, you you answer the phone. And I, and I, that's what I like to do. I mean, I, you know, we're, we're all here to serve our clients. All three of us, you know, are here to serve our clients. You know, that's that's not customer service. As quickly as we can, because, you know, that's what they're waiting for. Michelle, any, any other questions come up for you? That was very informative. Okay, perfect. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. Wonderful talking with you. We'll put this together. Take care.